Hey there, it's Board Game Dave, and today we're taking a look at Genotype, a Mendelian genetics game by Genius Games. Now, in this game, we take on the role of researchers working alongside Gregor Mendel as he does his pivotal, groundbreaking research into the genetics of pea plants and sort of discovers the fundamentals of inherited traits, recessive, dominant, all that stuff you learned at some point, I'm sure, in biology. So uh, in this game, there's five rounds. Each round has an action phase and a dice drafting phase. So in the action phase, we are going out to various spaces on the board to uh, gather different sorts of pea plants and do some gardening and nurturing and getting tools from the tool shed and going to the university to do research and uh, hiring assistants as well, all that good stuff. And then in the dice drafting phase, we are drafting these offspring dice, which represent genetic inheritance uh, to kind of further our research and uh, grow our pea plants. So we we do that for five rounds. At the end of five rounds, the player with the most points wins. Now, before we get to the rules overview, I'm gonna go ahead and just tell you right now that I think this game is absolutely fantastic. It contains so many of my absolute favorite mechanisms in board games, including worker placement, dice drafting, order fulfillment, engine building. It's got this variable market for upgrades, all these amazing, wonderful things, and it could feel very disconnected and disjointed and clunky and awkward, but it doesn't. All of those things blend so seamlessly together and it's only five rounds. It's over like that. I just think it's amazing. It also has this very fun and compelling solo mode I'll tell you a little bit about later. So all in all, this is a phenomenal game. I think it's absolutely worth checking out. But before I get ahead of myself too much, let's go to the table. I'll tell you how to play very quickly and then we'll come back and do my full review. All right, here we are all set up for a two player game of Genotype and there's some stuff off the board, but that's okay. Genotype takes place over the course of five rounds. You'll see those right here and each round has several phases and thankfully they're all detailed on the back of the rule book. So we go through the working phase, the action phase essentially. Then we do plant breeding phase, that's dice drafting. Then we do research upgrades. Then we do end of round reset. It's that simple. So four phases through five rounds. So uh, starting with the starting player right here with the garden trout, you're gonna take turns placing a trout on various action spaces on the board and or your own player board. So let's take a look at a player board, okay? You can go here to do some gardening, right? That's gonna let you take a plant or a tool card from the display there. You can uh, harvest any completed pea plants and plant any pea plants as well. So you'll notice on these pea plant cards, there's a score up at the top left, as well as these genotypes that you need to draft from the dice, right, in order to complete them. So that's what we're trying to do essentially. That's the main source of points in this game. So you're gonna be planting them and then fulfilling them as well. So that's a spot on your board. You can also place one of your trials here as a temporary dice slot. That lets you take more than that base three dice. You can take a fourth and a fifth, although there's other ways to upgrade that as well. Okay, out here on the player board, there's other things you can do, or on the main board, I should say. Treasury lets you get some coins. You can go to the university to instantly fulfill one of those requirements. You could just put a P leaf marker on one of those traits like that. Okay, so that's one way to do it by spending uh, one or two coins up there. You can come to the nursery to take new pea plant cards, down here to the tool shed to get new tools. Over here on the left side, you can go over here, right, to change the parent genotype. So right now we've got a capital lowercase, or we call that a heterozygous dominant parent plant pair, right? But you can change that to capitals, right? You can change it to lowercase on the X or Y axes, and that's gonna change the outcome of the dice rolls, which we can talk about in a little bit. So that's one way you can sort of manipulate the result of the dice. You can also go here and claim first shift. There's also second shift down here as well. It's gonna change the dibs order uh, of the dice drafting. And then down here, you can also set a research goal that's gonna let you put one of your discs on uh, one of these spaces corresponding to various uh, genetic phenotypes. <clears throat> and then you'll score extra points for those uh, phenotypes on your completed uh, plants. So that's what we're going for essentially. So uh, we work our way around the board, you know, round and round, placing those trials out to take action um, spaces and we resolve them immediately for the most part. Then we move into the dice drafting plant breeding phase. Now this is fun. So we take all of these dice, there's 20 dice over here, five for each attribute. And by the way, I haven't talked too much about the theme, but uh, the blue is seed shape, there's flower color, pod color, and plant height. You might remember 
shriveled peas and yellow versus green peas and all that stuff from biology. That's what we're doing here. So we roll all the dice. If there's mutant gene ones, we roll them again, but I'll just kind of speed along here, okay? Once you've got your dice all rolled, okay, you're gonna take a look at them and put them in their corresponding spots. So this is where changing the parent uh, genotypes is gonna affect the outcome or at least uh, with the rule of probabilities, it should, right? So we look at our ones, right? Ones would be capital then lowercase. So that is a heterozygous dominant. And then down here, right? Threes and fours are both uh, homozygous recessive, right? Lowercase r, r. Now you'll notice in this case, the way we have it here, there is no way to get capital, capital, right? Uh, both dominant. So uh, that's where mutations come into play. You can draft these and use it to basically force it to be double capitals. So that's why changing these is so important. Anyway, so we do that for each one. You'll get the dice uh, in their corresponding slots, like so and like so, and we'll just kind of speed through this very quickly. Let's say something like that, right? And then we do dice drafting. So remember how we did that first dibs, second dibs, they get to go first. Then we go around clockwise, and you're gonna take those dice, put them on your board to, again, fulfill those attributes. So I'm looking for a, uh, you know, if I'm down here, I'm looking for an uppercase and lowercase t, I could draft one of those dice, right, which fulfills that attribute, and I would go ahead and place this here, right? Super simple. So again, we're just trying to fulfill those cards. That's the dice drafting phase. After that, we go into the research upgrades, and that's this whole area of the board here. We do this in reverse player order, and you're gonna pay the corresponding costs up there to get that upgrade. So there's four different types, you can get an extra plot to add to your player board, so that's gonna let you uh, work on multiple plants at a time, which is great, okay? There's a new dice slot, which lets you take more dice naturally during the dice drafting phase. Action marker, right? Each player has two extras here, unlocks a new action, which is huge, right? Getting a new worker, essentially. And then higher assistance. So there's a small deck here, I think there's 10 different assistants, and each has this ability, which is uh, referenced with a fairly uh, cryptic icon, but they're all detailed here, as well as the tools. So you can see what the assistants do, and they all have kind of special powers, either one-time effects or pervasive uh, effects as well. So you can hire them into your crew. Now, the important thing, and I love this so much, is that uh, as soon as a player, you know, buys an upgrade, let's say they buy a dice slot, that price moves up, right? So as players buy, and you can go around and around and do this, you're going to be moving this up. So they get more expensive as players purchase those upgrades, right? That's it, right? The round uh, end of round cleanup is we wipe the nursery, wipe the tool shed, refill. All of these move down one step, right? So it gets a little bit more cheap. Uh, move this to round two, and then essentially you're ready to go. Take your trials back, and we do it again. There are some coins for the first player that goes to these locations. We'll uh, refill those as well. But that's essentially it. At the end of the game, you're gonna be adding up points from a variety of places. You're gonna add up all of your completed plant cards, and hopefully you'll get lots and lots of points from there. You're also gonna be checking your research goals. Remember, if you claimed uh, a corresponding phenotype down here, you're gonna check your plants that have that. Let's say I claim this space, right? So for each capital, double capital F and uppercase lowercase F, I'm gonna get two points. So that would be two points here, two points here, for example, right? Uh, coins are also a point at the end of the game. Unfinished pea plants, you get a point for each leftover um, token covering up those letters. So that should be it. The player with the most points wins. And that is a basic, quick overview of how to play Genotype. So now that you've got a general idea of how to play Genotype, let's go through my seven point criteria, starting with art and components. And I have to say the art and components in this game are absolutely superb. I love those custom dice. I love the unique wooden tokens. Uh, the cards are super nice and the art is absolutely gorgeous. It really doesn't get much better than this when it comes to art and components besides maybe some metal coins, but thankfully I've got some of my own that I can uh, use. So overall, I give it a nine and a half for art and components. Second is complexity versus audience. Now the box does say 14 and up, which sounds about right. I mean, this is obviously, you know, a gamer's game. This is not uh, a family intro weight game, but at the same time, it's not overly complex. There's not a ton of rules overhead. And the teach is actually fairly intuitive and straightforward. As you notice, we just kind of go through each phase of the game and they all blend together really well. So it's not uh, too daunting, but again, you're getting what you expect from a game like this, you know, those Euro worker placement economy elements. I think it's just a perfect match for 
complexity versus the intended audience, which includes hopefully, you know, kids in high school who might be learning about genetic inheritance in biology or something like that. So I think the intended audience and the working audience is a perfect match. It's a 10 out of 10 for complexity versus audience. Third is thematic integration. And just like I said last week about another genus games, Cytosis, I love how they're able to weave these scientific principles so seamlessly into their games. Those science games by genus games are all about teaching scientific principles through board games, right? And that happens brilliantly in Cytosis and in Genotype as well. Now, I will say that this game is not as strictly educational as Cytosis was. I mean, this was like straight out of a cell biology textbook. In Genotype, the whole uh, genetic offspring inheritance, it's probably about half of the game and then the other half is much more standard worker placement, you know, Euro game stuff. But even still, I think that the theme comes through brilliantly, whether you're, uh, you know, trimming and pruning your pea plants or drafting those different genetic uh, inheritance dice or hiring assistants or researching at the university. All that stuff comes through very, very well. And it helps to tie those mechanisms, like I said, together. The theme is just fantastic. I give it a nine and a half out of 10 for thematic integration. Number four is intuitive mechanics. And as I've already alluded to, this game is very, very intuitive. The phases, the actions you take, all of it just makes a lot of sense, just organically as well as because of how well integrated the theme is. There are some tricky things to remember with those tools and the assistant powers, but thankfully, the back of the rule book has a summary of all of them, which is fantastic as a reference. So all in all, super intuitive. I give it a nine and a half out of 10 for intuitive mechanics. Fifth is replayability. And while there are a decent number of those unique tools and those assistants I love so much in this game, there's not a ton of them. And you are gonna see almost for sure, all of them throughout the course of a game. So as far as, you know, uh, discovering brand new things you've never seen before, that doesn't really happen in this game. But at the same time, there are a lot of different strategies to explore in this game, which I love. And it just keeps coming back to try new things, new tools, upgrades, assistance, etc. Not to mention there is an amazing solo mode in this game with a variety of diff uh, difficulty levels. And at the highest difficulty, you can also give the AI opponent a uh, unique, basically asymmetric power that uh, it has for the game. And there's uh, uh, like five different ones. So all that to say, there is a lot of replayability to be found in this game. I give it an eight out of 10. Number six is length and fun factor, and they absolutely nail it here. It's fantastic. It's five rounds. Uh, the box says 45 to 75 minutes. I found that to be very accurate in my plays, although I haven't played at some of those higher player counts, but it's snappy, it's zippy, it's fun, it's quick, your turns aren't bogged down by AP, it's just everything just flows so smoothly and it doesn't overstay its welcome, which I love, it's such a great game life. In addition, that whole fun factor, right? Like, you know, does the game evolve or change or does it sort of stay dry and not too different? That is not lost here in Genotype because there is this engine building, this sense of progression as you acquire more dice slots and more garden plots and you're getting assistance and tools and each round feels like you can accomplish so much more with your actions. It's just fantastic. It's phenomenal. There's building to this progression and then the game's over and it's time to score. I love it. The pacing, the flow, the building, the progression, the engine building is all done very, very well. And I give it a nine and a half out of 10 for length and fun factor. And finally, cost versus value. Now I'm seeing this game online for about 48 to $55, which is a little bit pricey. That being said, you are getting a phenomenal game here as far as the art and the components and the fact that you're getting a game that's going to teach you something or remind you at least about genetic inheritance and those offsprings and dominant and recessive and all that stuff and the solo mode that's baked in and the replayability, all that stuff. You're getting a very, very, very high value game for your 50-ish dollars. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it an eight and a half out of five for cost versus value. And there you have it. Overall, Genotype gets a final score of 9.2 out of 10, which is absolutely astounding. And yes, I am gushing and praising this game to no end, but I really, really love Genotype. Again, it takes all my favorite modern board game elements, essentially, and just breaks them into one quick, 
succinct, easily accessible package, and I do not think you're gonna find many board games at all that do it so well while also, again, you know, being a part of this scientific breakthrough world theme. I think it's so amazing. You can learn something as you play. It's just fantastic. So yes, highly recommend you check out Genotype. Someone mentioned on Instagram, I think that is a bit of a uh, flies under the radar. You know, it's a little uh, underhyped. So check it out look into it, play it if you can. I highly recommend it. Now, before I say goodbye, I have to shout out my friend Colin Walsh in Ireland. Hannah's sister met him while she was in Ireland and he's a Board Game Dave fan, which is pretty insane. So if you are a non-US Board Game Dave fan, shout out in the comments. I would love to know where you're from. And in the meantime, if you didn't see my cytosis review from last week, you can check that out right here. If you'd like to hear me gush about another game about monks, but this time brewing beer instead of growing pea plants, you can check out this video in which I mentioned Heaven and Ale, one of my ultimate favorite games. You must check it out. That's another underrated gem. So check this and this video out. In the meantime, have a wonderful week. Take care and happy gaming. Bye.